<laughs> the struggles of fishing by yourself. Oh, he's hooked up there. All right, guys, I got two on right now. Oh yeah, guys, this is a tank. It's a two-hander, baby. What's up guys, just put the boat in the water, headed out today, I'm solo. Uh, it's working on mid-November right now, so I'm gonna try to sneak in a few more flatheads today. So we're gonna go out here, do some scanning, try to find some active fish, some good areas of the river to hit, and uh, see if we can put some flatheads in the boat. All right guys, I'm down to my first area I wanna check out. Um, what we have here, we're on an outside bend of the river, a um, bunch of, gnarly brush piles right up along this bank and then just upstream there's a backwater mouth so we're going to scan through here and see if we can find some fish in when i say fish i don't mean flatheads like they don't necessarily have to be flatheads i'm just i'm looking for life i'm looking for active life around structure ideally the good thing is with flathead fishing if you find bait in other game fish there's going to be feeding flatheads somewhere around there feeding on them so that's kind of what we're looking for it doesn't necessarily have to be flatheads i'm marking on the fish finder and already i'm seeing a lot of bait fish close to the bank here okay here's a couple bigger marks so what we're going to do, and we're right outside of this backwater mouth, so we're going to start probably right here. We're going to fish the mouth of this backwater and give it probably about 30 or 40 minutes. And if we don't catch anything, we're going to bounce back about 200 yards where we saw all the other bait staged up downstream on the wood. So I just drop my cursor right on the structure scan, right where I want to target. And then I drive up about 80 feet and uh, we're going to spot lock. We're going to use the trolling motor to anchor today because I'm by myself and I'm lazy and I don't feel like throwing an anchor. Okay, there's 80 feet right there. Let me slow the boat down. And spot lock. All right, man, I'm gonna throw out eight rods. All I got today is uh, shad, all big jumbo gizzard shad on ice. So we're just gonna chunk them up and, and spread them out. I just caught these yesterday, so they're nice and fresh. <laughs> Hopefully they're in the mood for shad. One thing I like to do, whether you're fishing by yourself or whether you got a couple guys on the boat with you and you got multiple rods out, I like to get all the baits dangling and start casting all at the same time. So that way we're not just putting a bait on, casting it, putting a bait on, casting it. The whole time your boat's moving and those, those baits are going to get all crossed up and it's going to be hard to keep them organized and keep them managed. So this is the way I like to do it. It really helps out with when using a lot of rods to make sure you cover your spread. I mean, I want to stagger my baits throughout all this, all the wood and right, right over in the mouth. And, uh, you know, I'm by myself once again. So if I get a, a tangle or something, a big fish runs me across a couple of these lines, it's going to suck. So anything I can do to prevent that, I'm going to try to do it. And this is a good little tip. All right, guys, I got, I got the area covered. So if there's gonna be active fish here, I'll bait nearby. Look, right there, we just got a hit on rod two. But if there's some, if there's some feeding fish here, we should know, we should know pretty soon. There's something messing with rod two right now. It just didn't even sit down yet. Looks like a channel cat. We got a little bit of current today, so let that current push around our, our scent. 
Lovely, some big old flatheads come and eat some. All right, guys, I gave the spot about 40 minutes. Um, every single rod has been hit. I think only one or two might have been flatheads and they were small. Uh, so I'm gonna give this probably about five more minutes and then we're gonna pull them in and try another spot. Probably catch one if we sat here long enough, but I don't wanna waste too much time. Spot number two. up a little bit on something. Definitely on that one. All those dink bites. That was about the real men. snagged up but this is wrapped around so the bubbles yeah it's a nice fish bottom lip which means I need to get the net all right guys it's in the boat it's until the end of the second spot get one, but we got one. All right, guys, there he is. First fish of the trip. All right, guys, he's going back in the river. First one of the trip. Hopefully we can find some more. Later, buddy. 35 minutes into the spot, I was growing impatient because I'm just getting dinked away. Every rod's getting dinked away by channels and possibly some turtles tugging on some baits. So, I mean, there's life here. I know there's life here. I'm confident when you find life, you'll find flatheads. But I was losing confidence and I was kind of getting antsy wanting to, wanting to go try somewhere else. So I'm kind of glad I gave it that at least 30, 40 minutes or else I would have missed that fish. I would have never caught him. So that being said, we're gonna give it about five more minutes and then uh, make a move.
Danke schon. Come on, buddy. Not a flatty. See if I can this other guy. Oh, I missed him. Let's get this dude in the boat. Dude, this guy got a, looks like a walleye or a sauger tail sticking out of his throat. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. He's feeding. All right, guys. There's flatty number two. Been pretty slow, man. We just got to spot number four. So we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Super soft. This feels like he's got a little more weight to him. Yeah, this feels like a good one, guys. Feels a little heavier. Bigger head shakes. <laughs> oh, this is not good now. Ah. <laughs> Struggles of fishing by yourself. Oh, he's hooked up there. All right, guys, I got two on right now. Crap. This one in my hand feels a little bigger. <sighs> Come on, buddy. Oh, yeah, 
right, guys, this is a tank. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Oh man, this is a beast. I'm gonna get the net. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a slob, guys. Whew. I'm gonna hang him and leave him in the water for a second and get that other one in. smaller <laughs> little chino cat oh, just, he just popped off we didn't want him anyways he's a little chino cat Whew, all right man this is what we come after oh yeah it's a two-hander baby two-hander baby yes All right, guys, that's a toad. That is a toad. Whoa. Whew, I thought that was going. That one's getting hit. All right. I mean, he's a 40 all day. There he is, guys. Heck of a fish, man. Hey, did just a small little baby cut chunk of shad. That fish is a beast. All right, I gotta somehow get a picture of this one by myself, so I'll be back. Another tip, guys, if you're weighing big fish, or really anything over 20 pounds, get a waist sling. Weigh them in a waist sling. It supports their whole body. If you don't, get just weigh them in your landing net and just tear off the weight of the net. Don't just hook a fish grip in their jaw. If you plan on releasing these fish, we gotta take care of them. 38-2. 38 pounds, man, that's a solid fish. All right, guys, he's going back in the river. Big boy. Nice mid-November flathead, man. Super light bite, they're hitting super light. Later, buddy. Thank you. I'll see you next year. Oh, oh I got him, guys. I got him. <laughs> He's trying to run up behind all my other lines. Man, these fish are hitting light. Kind of feels like another channel cat, but they're all hitting like that, even that big one. Here we are, 40 pound flathead hitting like a three pound channel cat. This is a this is a game fish. This is a big striper, big hybrid. <laughs> That's a big hybrid. He's up there doing the same thing them flatheads are doing. The 
stuff you catch flathead fishing. A little fun fact too, you, these, are, these make excellent flathead bait. Cut up little fillets, flatheads tear this up. But this guy, it's his lucky day, he's going back, I got plenty of bait. I want to go over this too, I mean this is, this is kind of basic, but a lot of people fill up their hook gap with their bait. When you're using a circle hook, put the bare minimum on that you're confident it won't fly off. Just that. Take that scale off the hook. See how there's all that hook gap still open. Don't be digging it in super deep. You'll lose a lot of fish. Once I started doing this, my hook up rate went way up. It kind of it's also good if you kind of go at an angle, it prevents the bait from rolling as much. But yeah. Barely put just the bare minimum in there. There we go, guys. Another one hooked up. Another flatty. This is probably the smallest flathead I've caught today, but he hit the hardest. Imagine that. All right, guys, there he is. Future giant. Future jumbo. Going back in the river to get bigger. Man, these fish are hitting light. They're hitting super light, guys. I hate reeling down early on fish because I miss so many of them, but I found today if I don't reel down after I see that first thump, they just spit it. The cold water got them slow and they're not really fighting too hard either. I'm just seeing a little bit of weight, just a thump on the rod tip and then it kind of just stays down just a little bit but doesn't go any further. All right, I'm gonna shut up so I don't lose this fish. All right, small fish eating one of the bigger baits I'm throwing out there. So I'm just from here on out, I'm throwing smaller chunks. It's a flatty. Sleeping on the hook. Saw that rod tip just slowly bouncing up and down. I'm trying to tie another rig because I broke off in the snag. I've seen that rod tip just. Here's another one here hitting. Super slow finicky bite. I mean flatheads hit finicky to begin with, but this is this is a whole different level. They're all wrapped up every time too. Now he 
wants to fight. Come on, bro, you're caught. Oh, he's hooked by a whisker. All right, man, the finicky bite continues. Little fellow, but it's a flatty. Can't get enough of them, man. I love catching them. Thank you, little, little dude. channel wrap. All right, guys, not the target species, but uh, it's a fish. I went 0 for 4 before this guy, man. I just kept missing them. They're short striking, so I'm jumping the gun on reeling on them, and I, I don't know, my timing's off or something. I just keep whiffing. Several of them, I'd say at least three of the four were definitely flatheads. But we're going to try to get one more spot in before dark here. See what happens. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Back at the boat ramp. Um, I sat through one more spot after dark. Sat there about 45 minutes. Had one flathead take, and I missed it. Go figure. Uh, they're hitting super finicky, man. They're just super slow. I ended up opening the clickers up, but I didn't get another bite. So it's about 8 o'clock now, so I just got off the water. Um, can't really complain too much about the day. I believe I put 10 fish in the boat, six or seven flatheads, a couple channels, and that uh, that hybrid striper. So all in all, man, it was a pretty good day, pretty good day on the water. One more note, guys. Um, I get asked a lot of questions on what gear I use. Um, in every video, if you go in the description, I understand a lot of people don't go in the video's descriptions, but I have links to everything I use from uh, the rods, hooks, line, leader line, all that kind of stuff. All the links of everything I use is in the description of every one of my videos. Um, if you guys have any other questions, you can send me a message or uh, comment on one of the videos. And also in that description, you see me a lot of time rocking catfish clothing gear. Um, I have a promo code. They support me in this channel, and I can give you guys 20% off. Just use the promo code JG20OFF on their website. Save 20% off. All right, man, that's going to do it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, subscribe. Look at oh that my God. flathead. That's a giant.